How many have, have maybe heard in the last week from either your parents or your teachers or your bigger brother and sister to grow up? Just grow up. Yeah. How many of you think in this room, how many of you think you are a mature person? You're very mature. I'm a little immature. I, I probably fit that category. Right? Now, we've all seen some people act immature, right? We've seen uh, some of our very close friends, uh, even, even these people right here. You've seen them act immature. They goof around a lot. Joel and Levi just give RA a hard time. And uh, I think already probably starts it though. But we all have um, now with with our when we grow up, you know, you have your you start out as a baby. You start off in your mommy's tummy, then you're born and you're you're a baby, and then you grow up, right? Your physical body begins to grow. We all have a physical body life story, whether you like it or not. Okay, we started as a baby and we grow up. Let me share with you part of my physical. Story. Okay, so we're gonna go through these in about three or four seconds at a time. So go ahead. That final, hold on on that one a minute. That guy in the middle that doesn't match the stripes and the plaid, that's me as a little boy. That's little Bobby. Alright. Our next one, okay? There's this cool picture of me. And that a sweet looking tie. Alright, and next, there we go. That's good. And the next one is my favorite. I was trying not to blink. Alright? I didn't want to blink. A sweet velvet sweater. Look at that hair. Yeah. Alright, there's my senior picture. That's my senior high school picture. That's my college picture. They made me do this. Right there, that's when I'm acting mature. There's me with Justin Bieber. And that's today. That's current picture. Okay? That's our uh, website picture for our church. Okay. You all have a, a life and body story where your body has grown and uh, developed over time. And uh, it happens. We were talking in this series about get your steak up. The three up here, the way they ended was where they needed to be. And when we're talking about getting your steak, and we're really not talking about the physical meat. The, the little baby was on milk because that, that, that's what the baby can handle at this point. Some people get to where they can handle, when you grow older, you can get handle a little bit of bread and then to meat. And spiritually, it's the same thing. It's really difficult for you to learn all of the theologies and doctrines of the Bible when you're just a baby in Christ, when you just met Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So there's progression, and everybody has their story. Everybody progresses at a different pace, but hopefully there's progression. Um, physical growth is a natural process. If the human, I just shared my human body story with you, and it would be a shame if, as we never grew out of that baby stage, and we kind of looked like this, you know, over time. We looked like, you know, we just... <laughs> We didn't really grow up, you know? So with humans, you see us grow up. Now the same can be said with chickens. If a chicken doesn't come out of its egg, what'll happen? It'll get scrambled. All right, no. It'll die, right? It'll die. It'll get scrambled, okay? Now, how about an acorn? If an acorn what kind of a tree does an acorn come from? An apple tree. An oak tree. An oak tree. If an acorn, if an acorn stays like that too long, it'll die, or a squirrel would probably eat it, right? Okay? Um, but an acorn has the possibility of uh, growing into an oak tree. Now, Paul, listen. Paul, who wrote 1 Corinthians in, in the Bible, uh, uh, was talking about feeding uh, some people the uh, milk and, and solid food. In 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3, uh, it was talking about this. He was, he was um, 
talking to some people, and he thought that he came back to these people, and he thought they should be a little bit further along in their in their faith. But he said that their sin was keeping holding them back. They were feeding their sinful life and their sinful nature more than they were feeding their spiritual life. So they were more interested in in um, feeding that. So this is what it says in the, in the Bible. Maybe some of you are like that. Actually, you're more interested in feeding your sinful life and what pleases the devil than what pleases our God. Uh, but maybe some of you are really interested in feeding your spiritual life what God wants you to do. So this is what it says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. It says this, Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, it's talking about Paul, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as, as, I, would, as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk to you though you belong to this world or as though you were infants in the Christian life. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are, je you are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you, like, aren't you living like people of the world? Now, there's, we're, we're talking about, in this series, Get Your Steak On. Now, for those of you that are vegetarians and don't really like to talk about meat, okay? Let's go to the tree for a second, okay? If we took... Uh, an acorn, and we went out and planted, you know, we wanted to plant this tree, right? We would expect that that tree would not stay this way for very long. We would think maybe not the next day it doesn't turn into a giant oak, right? But if we were to return the second year and it still looked like that, we would think something was wrong. Then we go back on year three, and if it was like that, we would think something is wrong, right? Because healthy things are going to grow. And that's the, that's the natural thing that needs to happen when you plant something even like a tree. Um, and so we would think there's something wrong. And I think with our own spiritual life, guys, when we're talking about getting your steak on, there's something wrong. Now, there's some things that uh, the day that Jesus Christ came into your life, you became maybe what is known as a babe in Christ, a baby Christian. You're just in your infancy of just getting to know Jesus Christ. Um, but if I were to visit you... A year or two down the road after you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you still are not, you know, um, you're, you're still not, um, you still haven't moved from that spiritual state. You haven't grown. You haven't learned anything. And then I would visit you five years later, and you haven't grown in any way. There's probably something wrong. One thing that really frustrates me as a youth pastor is that when, when let's say a kid comes in at seventh grade, like some of you are on this side, and you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And there's not a lot of change or growth. You graduate here and go off into college and there's been no growth. It's as if you were a baby feeding on milk that entire time. Somewhere along the way, you're going to have to learn that you've got to pull out your Bible and start to read it and study it on your own. Because we as leaders, we can provide some great information from God's Word. We can provide teaching and small groups can talk about a lot of things. But there's somewhere along the way where you are going to have to start taking responsibility for your spiritual life. That doesn't mean you can't ever go and get any help, okay? But there has to be a time where you start doing that. Now, we're all at different stages in our spiritual life. Some of you don't yet have an appetite for God. Some of you are still checking out what's on the menu. What does God have to offer? Some of you truly are just... Born again believers where you've just trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're just learning about who this God is. Then there are some of you that have maybe moved on to something more substantial in God's Word and you've moved on to something a little harder to, to, to take in, some bread. And then there are some of you who have gone on to some of the meatier things of the Scriptures and beginning to digest them a little bit better. And still yet there are many here that have said, I want to help someone else start eating I want to help someone else. So we're all at different stages. I understand that. Now, if you are a brand new believer in Jesus Christ, there's four things that can help you grow. And I want you to see these four things because maybe this is something that's new to you. There's four things. I think reading your Bible on a regular basis. Now, don't just read it, you know, when, when you're in a small group time and that big sheet of paper is on your table. But I want to challenge you to take God's word and continue to read it on a regular basis. I would actually ask you to go a step further. Not just read it, but have a little journal of some sort and write down your observations. 
as you're reading it, write down, oh yeah, I noticed this in there, I noticed this in there. I don't know what this means, but I'm writing it down because I want to figure out what it means. Okay? So we read the, read the Bible, write it down, make some observations, write down some questions. The second thing I think you, you, you can do to help you grow is to attend church on a regular basis. Um, maybe that's youth group, but I would encourage you to attend with your family to church on a Sunday morning or some churches are on Saturday nights, but I would really encourage you to do that. Uh, and thirdly is to get connected to a small group where you can grow with other believers. Because you know that in your small group time, uh, how you get to interact with everybody, that's really important. Not just interacting just for the fun's sake, but as we talk about these biblical principles, uh, every week you get to learn from your other friends that are in that group. So being connected to a small group also helps you be a part of a group that cares for one another. When, when somebody in your group is hurting, maybe you're hurting too. When you're hurting, Maybe they're kind of hurt for you too and it can help provide some needs for you. And then, and then lastly, number four, just simply learning how to pray, which is talking, talking to God, praying for direction, praying for help, praying for others, praying for wisdom, uh, and those sort of things. So if you're a new believer, those are, some four, those are four things that you can do. Um, you don't have to stay an acorn. This week I emailed Stephanie uh, and asked her if she could go and round up 250 acorns. In the woods. <laughs> well, the acorns are, acorns are mostly gone right now, I found out. The squirrels have already hidden them all. Uh, but the reason I wanted her to get these acorns is we were going to make this necklace out of it. I was going to drill a hole through the acorn. We were going to make this leather rope to hang around your neck and you could wear. For those of you who have tree nut issues, that would not be good. But uh, for those who, who do not... And the reason I wanted that was this. I wanted you to, re to remind you, this is not what we should stay. Okay? That an acorn wasn't meant to stay an acorn. Okay? It was meant to be an oak tree. To, be, to grow and to be strong. So maybe you can go make your own next fall. Okay? Uh, we, we are not meant to just feed on milk our entire life. Can you imagine Deborah's little baby? Her entire life, all she did was drink out of a bottle. You want to say, come on, baby, grow up, right? She's 32 years old and still drinking a bottle, right? That's not how life is supposed to be. There's supposed to be progress, right, even in our physical realm, but even much more so on our spiritual realm. So I want to challenge you because we get to meet with you every week and talk about biblical principles. And I want to challenge you to open God's word for yourself and begin to read it and learn from it. And I think the more that you know about God, the more that you're going to love God. And the more that you love God, the more that you're going to want to share him with others and even to serve. Okay? If you don't have a Bible, we want to help you with that. We have some around here that don't just take one out of the chair. Okay? We need those for Sunday. But uh, if, you, if you need Bibles, you see one of us or one of the leaders and we'll make sure we give you one. But getting your stake on is about moving to whatever that next step is in your life, okay? Maybe you've been just feeding on just the basics of the Bible for so long, and you've got that down, and it's time to move on to something a little more meaty, okay? So no matter where you are, I'm not challenging you to do that. Let's pray, and then um, got something special for you. God, thank you so much for loving us. I pray that we honor you. I pray that everyone here will begin to take the next step in their spiritual journey, whatever it is. We know that we can come to you for help. When we need it, we can open your word, we can read it, we can journal. But Lord, I pray that we have the desire to move to the next step in our spiritual journey. And so that we can be people who get our stake on. I pray this in your son's name. Amen.